in. Why don't you take a few minutes and say hi to the person around you. Open up the doors again Let the King of glory in His kingdom will never end Oh, I know that you are good Break the darkness with the light All the earth let praise arise Every dead place come alive Oh, I know that you are good. Oh, I know that you are good. You will hear my hallelujah. You will own the highest name. All to you, I surrender. Put your hands together this morning. Sing Spirit of the Living God. Oh, Spirit of the Living God. Fire burning in my heart. Oh, I'm wide awake to who you are. Oh, I know that you are good. Yes, you are. Oh, I know that you are good. And you When I can't see As praise goes up I believe The walls are coming down Oh, when I was lost You rescued me When I was bound You set me free As praise goes up Come on, lift it up The walls are coming down Oh, you are my strength When I am weak Praise goes up. I believe the walls are coming down. Oh, when I was lost, you rescued me. When I was bound, you set me free. As praise goes up. I believe the walls are coming down. And you will hear my heart.
day we would be the living sacrifice of praise Jesus for you deserve the glory oh it's your breath in our lungs and we give it back to you Jesus for you deserve the glory oh and you deserve the praise come on sing it out you will have and you will hear my hallelujah. You will own the highest name. And all to you, oh, I surrender every breath. that again every breath oh every breath I take make my life one more time oh every breath I take make my
At this time, we just want to announce that there's prayer in the back for anybody who needs it. We encourage that. There's people that want to be with you and pray for you. Yeah, hallelujah. Just a reminder of about a couple of different things. Um, behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. There's an anointing that comes with that unity. It says that, that the Spirit will pour out a blessing there that is like the anointing on Aaron's robe that drips off the hem of his garment. And I just want you to know there's one greater than Aaron here. And if we're together in unity, the fact that Jesus is the name above every name, there's no other place we would go, that he truly did overcome that we can overcome by the blood of the Lamb, then this is the time to reach out and touch his garment, because he's here. He said, in the midst of the congregation, I'll give praise to you. Where two or three are gathered, he's in our midst. If you need prayer, now's the time. If you can't go back for prayer, then focus on him this morning, because his presence is near, and he's here to heal, and to restore and to bless. Amen. Amen. 
Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn, our sins they are many. Sing that again. Oh, praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn, our sins they are many, His mercy is more. No wrongs we have done Omniscient, all-knowing He counts not their sum Thrown into the sea Without bottom or shore Our sins, they are many His mercy is more So praise the Lord Patience would wait as we constantly roam. What Father so tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. So praise the Lord. His blood was the payment, His life was the cost. And we stood beneath the death we could never afford. And our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. So praise the Lord.
full of glory. And Lord, we declare it this morning. No matter our circumstances, no matter what we're in the middle of, you are holy. You are victorious. And Lord, we rest in that. We rest in the arms of a merciful Father who loves us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Would you give the Lord a praise offering this morning? Amen. God is good. Well, children can be dismissed through sixth grade. Children's nursery is available through three years old. Just uh, also want to make you guys aware that we do have the new directories out, and they should be in your mailboxes, so please check your mailboxes. If you don't have one and you want one, come talk to myself or Brad or Lisa, and we'll talk that through with you. Um, there are more directories available at the Information Center as well. A few announcements. Operation Christmas Child, they're looking for small cars and trucks for the months of April and May, so you guys can bring those off, bring those and drop them off at the uh, collection points that they have there. And uh, Mother's Day, Mother's Day is coming up soon, and MCCL is selling corsages again. Put your name on the list if you want to get your mom a Mother's Day corsage. So do that, men, for your wives, or... Um, Children for your parents, for your mothers. Men's breakfast is this Saturday coming up. Men's breakfast at 7 o'clock. And I believe Ben Faldet will be sharing some of that time. So come and be encouraged, men. Eat some great food and just some time of fellowship and worship together as men. Also that evening is lift night. Lift night is a great evening for us to lift the, the name of the Lord and come together and enjoy fellowship again. That will be at 6.30 here at um, this Saturday. Looks like there's a couple baby showers coming up. One for Josephine on Josephine Binder on Sunday, April 14th at 2 o'clock. And then there'll be a um, baby shower for Mary Godin. That's Dan Jr.'s wife, and that will be April 28th. And they're looking for an RSVP on that one. So sign up for that one, ladies, if you're going to be able to be there and bless them. Um, also, the Truebridge Spring Conference is coming up the 18th, 19th, and 20th. It's not too late to get signed up if you're interested in uh, participating in that. And then, I believe we have a missions video. Can we run that video, please?
are such a people that wants a quick move, splash of God. But sometimes it takes some sweat, it's a process of time. And uh, he's sending us out, we sang this morning. But we can't always go to places like Haiti when it's in the midst of turmoil like it is. And Haiti is one of those places that to get a clean drink of water is not an easy task. And what you just saw was the building of water filters for Haiti. And we're partnering with an organization called Bread to the Nations. We've been with them for a few years. Tammy and Steve Hegstrom have built amazing relationships in Haiti with pastors there and strengthening the church and really being hands uh, and feet on the ground in Haiti. It's not an easy time to go, but what we can do is join with Bread to the Nations. They're trying to raise funds for 40 water filters to be built like that. Doesn't sound like very many, but they're at $130 a piece. And as you can see, that we don't just buy the filters, we send the money and they're built there in Haiti. So you're actually doing multiple things, giving, giving some young men purpose and income and blessing that country with clean water. So their um, Bread to the Nations is trying to raise enough for 40. We think it'd be really cool if we could match that here and surprise them with another uh, an amount for 40 water filters as well. At $130 a piece, we have a goal of $5,200. And uh, we think we can do that. So for the month of April, we're going to have an offering box available in the back of the church. And if you could add to it by the end of the month, we want to make sure they're really blessed and that we help bring clean water to individual homes in Haiti. Amen? Can we do this? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Darian. Pastor Brad, why don't you come on up? Get the, get the living water poured out for us this morning. Well, let's join in prayer. Father God, we are so thankful that we can be here in your midst. We're thankful for the life that you offer us. And Father God, we just pray that you would open our ears this morning, help us to hear what you have for each of us individually, Father God, that you would help us to capture everything that you have for us this morning. We pray for your anointing to be on Pastor Brad as he proclaims your word. Um, Lord, again, help us to receive all of it. Help us to soak it up. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Beautiful morning out there. Um, we are going to start a new series on the character Joshua out of the Old Testament. And... Um, to be honest, I don't exactly know how it's going to flow over the next few weeks. We'll see. Uh, there's 24 chapters. I don't think we're going to do a 24-part series. Um, but uh, we're just going to kind of see where God goes. And so we're just going to kind of take a look at Joshua here in the beginning. Just give you a little uh, uh, precursor to where Joshua's at, starting with Joshua 1. is, And we've talked a lot about it over the last few months. But Israel was um, brought out of Egypt. And then they crossed the Red Sea. They got to Mount Sinai. Uh, there was some rebellion and some things that went on. They got the law. They went to go search out the land, the promised land that God had promised. They got, they got afraid of what they saw. They didn't trust the Lord. So they spent 40 years wandering. Um, Joshua was one of the two spies that came back with a good report. Uh, it was Joshua and Caleb. And so Joshua was allowed to continue to stay with, you know, they, he didn't die, in other words. And so he is with Israel now. Moses has died. And Joshua has taken over. Now, just consider a little bit of Joshua's situation. Really, Israel has only known one major top leader, Moses. And Moses has taken them through a lot of stuff. I mean, they've crossed the Red Sea. The Lord spoke to Moses on the mountain and gave him the law and, like, all this. I mean, Moses was like the, the, the bomb, um, right? I don't know if that's what they called it, but uh, called him. But he was, like, this, this is a pretty significant transition of time. And it's easy to just kind of pass over that. And here's Joshua, who had great character. We know that he wasn't afraid when he went in to um, the promised land, spied it out. He came back with courage and was strengthened in the Lord that we can do this with the Lord's help. So we know that about him. We know that when Moses would go and spend time um, 
in the presence of God. Moses would leave and Joshua would stay. He would stay there and just, be, uh, just spend time with the Lord. Those are important factors that led to this moment. And so here we are in chapter 1, and we're just going to start reading here. Chapter 1 of Joshua, verse 1, reading out of the NLT. It said, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River to the east and the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Wow, what a start. What a great promise on the front end of Joshua. We could, we could just close our Bibles right now and go home. You could just get your stitching tools out and stitch those promises into a pillow and then sleep on them every night to let those things sink into your mind because these are really amazing promises, right? It's good. That's, that's where we want to stop. That's where we want to stop reading. That's where we want to stop actually asking questions. Okay, let's comb back through this promise and look at it a a little bit closer. I'm not trying to downplay how great this promise is. In fact, the opposite. This promise is amazing. But let's go through it again one more time. (laughs) Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. We stopped right there. I think we're great. But what does God do next? What's the next part in the text? We just read it, not your question. He sets boundaries. He puts boundaries up. Wherever your feet go will be the land I've given you, but here's the boundaries. Ponder that for a little bit. God didn't just call Israel to conquer the whole world. That's not what he did. He said, here's your purpose. Here's the plan I have for you. Where you go, where I lead you, in other words, it'll be yours. I will give it to you. I will do what I said to your ancestors. I will give you. There's, there's boundaries here. But see, we're, we're a fickle people. We apply this now. We, we love the promises of God. We want to apply the favor of God in our lives. But we also like to be God of our life. We don't like boundaries. We like press against boundaries. Right? God says don't do this. And what do we want to do? We see it in children right away. You tell them they can't do something. And it's like, you could see it on their innocent little faces. They just, I can remember, I don't remember which, I don't remember which child it was. We have five, so one of them, probably all of them. But I remember the moment where, where I think it was Stephen. Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> Steve, Steve, Steve. He was hitting the wall. He was hitting the wall, and, I, and Carrie was like, don't hit that wall. And he's like, just standing next to the wall, just looking at mom. Like, Really? You really don't want me? Like, boundaries get put up, and we just have this flesh thing inside of us, this sinful nature that just pushes against the boundaries. Whether it's sin, whether it's the purpose in our life, whether we, I mean, we can look at Facebook. Oh, man, you could talk about this a long time. God, God can put, put a specific call on your life. And you know what we do? It is hard not to just jump on Facebook or any type of social media and you start seeing all of the other things that other people get to do, all the other things that other people get to have, and all of a sudden, guess what it stirs in us? A little bit of envy, a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of, look at how much fun they're having over there. All the, some of those party scenes look great in the pictures. And our flesh goes, that's, that's where I want to, I'm missing out. You guys ever heard of FOMO? F-O-M-O, fear of missing out. Like, we see it over there, and it's like, man, the grass looks really green over there. I know God's got some boundaries here, but, I mean, really? That looks pretty good over there. Why can't I have that? Why can't that be my life? What harm is it really going to have in my life if I cross the border for a little bit and go where God has not called me to go? 
God puts boundaries in our lives, not only just from sin areas, but even just the call in our lives. It's really for your own good. You know that? Like, like the world looks at boundaries that the Lord puts in place and, and it sees it like this confinement, like you're not actually free. You don't actually get to do what you want to do, so therefore it's bad. And they don't recognize that the boundaries are there for your protection. They're there so you can experience all that God has for you. And God is looking at Joshua and saying, listen, everywhere you go within these boundaries, I'm going to give you. That's freedom. That's protection. That's a really good thing. And sometimes we push against it. My notes are terrible today, so I've lost my spot. The second part. Somewhere in there. Oh, yeah, there it is. No one will be able to stand against you. Well, that sounds great. Do you know what it doesn't say? It doesn't say no one will stand against you. <laughs> it says no one will be able to. In other words, they're going to. They're going to try to, anyway. They're going to attack them. It's not going to be because of lack of effort. God does not promise us this easy life without struggles, without, without the world coming at us, without the enemy trying to attack us. He is most certainly coming after you. He's a, he's a liar, and he's on the prowl, looking for whom he may devour with his lies and his deceptions, his native language. We run into tough stuff where we're, we're having financial struggles, or we run into some sickness, or we run into times where it's not easy. God told us, Jesus said that would happen, but take heart, I will overcome. So these things are going to happen and it's like a, almost like a, a promise, but a warning all at the same time. They will not overcome you. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. It doesn't say you won't fail. It says I won't fail. As we read the rest of this story with Joshua, you're going to see Israel fails often. If we read before this, you'll see Israel fails often. If you start thinking about your own life, you will recognize you and I, we fail often. God never fails, we fail. And here's where the next part comes. It's interesting, he, he kind of puts on, on bookends here of this situation is the responsibility part. Verse 2, before he even goes into the promises, therefore the time has come for you to lead these people. There's a responsibility there. Again, we love the promises of God, and we should. But there's almost like this thing, sometimes we, it's, it's taught in other places, and maybe I've even taught at times, and I certainly don't mean to, that the promises of God are just, they're, 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 there's no contingency, or there's no um, deviations at all. We have a responsibility in the promises of God. If we want to experience the fullness that God intends for us, we have a responsibility to play. God's sovereignty plus our responsibility attains God's promises. The sovereignty of God can really twist you up, actually. As you, in, if you start looking into, okay, God has this plan. God's all-knowing. He's, he's in time like we're not in time. He's in the past. He's in the present. He's in the future. He's everywhere all at once. He's all-knowing. We're supposed to have free will. We know this. How does this work with God's sovereignty and God's plan? You can really start to twist up and start coming up with some weird ideas. Which really, the mind, mindset here is, is recognize that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He is far above anything we can possibly comprehend. And so at some level, not some level, at the complete level, we have to learn to trust him and recognize that we have, Scripture lays it out plenty, we have a responsibility how many want to experience the promises of God in your life? Only a couple. There's only a few. Just, okay. <laughs> we want to experience God's promises. And we, it should, they're good stuff. But we have a part to play. We have a responsibility. And, and before God even lays it out for Joshua, now's the time for you to lead. 
these people, this nation. Now's the time, husbands, to lead your family. Parents, to parent your children. Now's the time to manage your finances in a godly way and God will bless your finances. Now's the time to be a great employee or an employer. To lead appropriately with God's wisdom. Now's the time. There's promises that come with that. But there's a responsibility. Verse 6. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one, for you are the one who will lead them. There's that, that bookend. On the front end, you're gonna lead them. Promises, and then he tells them again, you will lead them. These people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. And he says it again: be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions of all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. If you have your Bibles, underline the word then. Then you will be successful in everything you do. How many want to be successful in everything you do? Sounds really good to me. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then, so then and only then, will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Twice, God promises success, and on both sides, and both times, the backside of that success remark is obedience. There's a call to obey, to follow the word of God, to follow the Holy Spirit as he leads you. That is the key to success. Now, hear me. When God's definition of success is not the world's definition of success, so be careful not to start measuring it by the world's standards because you'll get all sideways real fast because the success in God's kingdom looks very different and it has very long eternal rewards to it. The worldly success stuff is just here and that's fine, it's good and I believe God will grant success here as well at times but if we get caught up with that as the measuring stick, we will quickly start to question whether or not following this is really worth it. Because our measuring stick is wrong. Obey. Obedience is so important. God's promises plus our obedience releases all of the favor of God. We want the favor of God in our lives. And there are people out there teaching that it's just just because the cross happened, now all of God's favor is in your life. That's not how it works. We are bought and paid for because of the cross. And we have... We have the keys now to walk in something that we never had before. Consider this thought. If, if I say, if I were to buy somebody free education, if I bought that free education for somebody, but they did not apply themselves, they did not go to class, they didn't study, they didn't show up for class or the tests, they don't end up with a good education, do they? Was the education free? Yes. Was the promise of good knowledge that could be applied to their life obtained? No. So the promise of free education is great, but the application of getting in there and studying, spending time in the classroom, spending time getting ready and learning and applying those things in in the life is the next step of that promise that actually allows you to benefit from the gift of free education. God is... God has bought and paid for us. We are born again. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are born again. You are righteous in the sight of God because of the blood that covers you. You have this new life. You're a new creation. Guess what? If you want to partake in all of the promises God has for you, you've got to do a little bit of studying. 
You're going to spend some time in the classroom. You're going to spend some time seeking after him and then applying it to your life. Now, again, this doesn't mean you're not going to have trials. In fact, you're going to have trials. We already talked about that. But the enemy won't be able to stand up against you because you're applying all of the things that God's putting in front of you and you're seeking and you're meditating on his word day and night. I don't have this in my notes, but Psalms 1 is, is one of my favorite Psalms. I'm just going to read that. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with the mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. What does that sound like? It sounds very much like the promise that Joshua received. But not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Verse 2 and 3 are so powerful, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They, like, they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. That always struck me. Bearing fruit in each season. That's not really typical. Their, season, their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. You see, God gives us a promise. God gives Joshua a promise, and I believe we have a similar promise that, that, the, that the Lord wants to, is going to be with us in all that we do when we what? When we obey him, when we meditate on his word. There's the power. There's the power part. The, the title this morning is, is Promise, Power, and Purpose. That promise that God has for us, that he will never leave us, never forsake us, that the enemy cannot stand against us, when we what? When we go before the Lord, we get into his presence, we meditate on his, on his word day and night. We seek after him, and he empowers us then. I'm excited. There's future chapters here where we're going to read about where Joshua goes, and they don't do anything. Israel barely does anything, and God wins the fight. Except obey what he tells them to do. Except follow his instructions, no matter how strange it might feel, no matter what it might look like to the world around them. Just obey. And God will empower you, and you will see victory. You will see success in your life. You will experience the fullness that God intends for your life to have. So God's promises plus our obedience releases all of the favor of God, God's favor. Okay, go to verse 10. Joshua then commanded the officers of Israel, go through the camp and tell the people to get their provisions ready. In three days, we will cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you. Then Joshua called together the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. He told them, remember what Moses said the servant of the Lord commanded you. The Lord your God has given you a place of rest. He has given you this land. Your wives, children, and livestock may remain here in the land of Moses, in the land Moses assigned you in the east side of the Jordan. But your strong warriors, fully armed, must lead the other tribes across the Jordan to help them conquer their territory. Stay with them until the Lord gives them rest as he has given you rest and until they too possess the land the Lord your God has given them. Only then may you return and settle here on the east side of the Jordan River in the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, assigned you. They answered Joshua, we will do whatever you command us and we will go wherever you send us. We will obey you just as we obeyed Moses. This actually always struck me comical because if you read through the stories in the wilderness, they didn't always obey Moses real well, but um, I, I do recognize that this is the generation that's made it through the wilderness, so that's good, but it did strike me funny the first time I read it. Like, oh great, if I was Joshua, that might cross my mind. Like, great. Um, 
And may the Lord your God be with you as he, is with, as he was with Moses. Anyone who rebels against your orders and does not obey your words and everything you command will be put to death. Be strong and courageous. There's something really beautiful about this little section of uh, this chapter. I'll give you a little history. Those three little tribes, um, Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, they actually, in, in chapter 32 of Numbers and 33 of Deuteronomy, they actually really liked the land that was on the east side of the Jordan because it was really favorable for livestock. And so they actually asked if they could have it. And Moses was actually against it at first, but after they talked about it a little bit, it was like, okay, if you're warriors, because he didn't want to lose the warriors. They need the, they need the fighters in order to take the land that God promises on the other side. But they kind of come up with this agreement that as long as the warriors go, go with to the other side to take the land, you guys can have your place of rest here. You can have this land. And it's already assigned to them. So they already have their place of peace. But there's this really beautiful thing that Israel always seemed to model really well, and it's that, oh, that musketeer quote, all for one and one for all. There's a unity thing here that's really powerful in the sense that, okay, we've got what we want, but guess what? There's still a battle to be fought for other people. So though we have a place of rest, we're going to send our warriors with so they can fight over here until that land is obtained. There's a call on us as believers, as a church. Some of us are in seasons of rest where we, the Lord has blessed us and we're in a good place. Guess what? That doesn't mean you get to sit back on your hands and do nothing. That means we come alongside others who need, to, need help. They need to be rescued or fought with. Hey, just Even the, the, the um, video this morning for missions. Like We've got wells and water here, right? But guess what? There are believers and people who need Jesus who don't. So we have an opportunity to send help, to be that help. That's from a, a mission standpoint, but think about it in our own lives, in our own community. There are people within our church that are hurting, that need to be comforted, that you can reach out to. There are people who are in need, that you might have something they need. There are people that just need somebody to come alongside them and be with them because they feel so lonely. It is not hard. You do not have to look long to see the needs in other people around us. We are called to be a people that looks out for one another, that looks to outdo one another in honor, looks to provide for people who are in need. But it takes being intentional and there's a, there's a right here in the front end of the whole book of Joshua, this picture of unity that strengthens a nation. And we can walk in something very similar as a church. Not only to serve and protect and to minister to the people within our own body, but the community around us that needs Jesus. In that, there's purpose. We're called to engage in this life and to obey so we can experience God's promises, but we're not called to do it alone. We're not called to experience God's promises alone. We're called to do this together. Like, this is, like we talk about church family. That really is what it is. In fact, I see a lot of you more than I see my actual family. which is how God intends it to be. But our hearts have to be positioned for one another, positioned to serve, to love, to give, to support. But too often, it's really easy for us to start getting way too worried about our own little kingdom, to get inward focused. We're worried about our own accolades, our own treasures, our own struggles, our own responsibilities, our own sins, i tell you, that is one of the, one of the um, master plans of the enemy is when sin gets a hold in somebody's life, not only does it affect your life, but it puts you on the bench because you're so focused on your own stuff that you actually don't have the ability to do this. 
It's such a ploy of the enemy to sideline people. But you know what? When the body's functioning, there are people to come alongside you to perhaps call out that sin which isn't fun, but to love and to show compassion and to restore, to bring restoration and healing, to help you fight those battles and drive out the enemy so that rest can come. Which is what happens in the book of Joshua. God has given us lots of promises. He's given us the power of his word, the power of his name, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit living in us to obey well, to die to self well, so we can obtain those promises and live in the favor of God and experience God's purpose for us. Too often we get, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? What's my purpose? And that's not a bad question to ask. But a better question is, is what's our purpose as a body that we can move forward proclaiming his goodness and his good news to a world that doesn't understand it? The world is so divided and mixed up. How heartbreaking is it when the church gets like that? Man, we've got to fight against that. So that we can be a strong unit empowered by the Holy Spirit, empowered by his name, and empowered by his word to go out and drive the enemy out and take the promised land that he has for us. Romans 12 is a popular verse for good reason. Verses 1 and 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This truly is the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors of the world. Don't cross the borders Don't find yourself going in to what other people say is the right thing. Stay within God's boundaries and the customs of the world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Don't you stand with me this morning? How many want to know their purpose or how many already know, but raise your hand if you want to know and you know what your purpose is as a believer. And if you don't, if you want to know, raise your hand. This should be everybody in the room. Everybody should want to know the purpose. Okay, good. A couple hands there. How many want to succeed at that? Amen. How many know you can't do it alone? We need, we need the Holy Spirit. We need His Word. We need each other in order to walk in the purposes He has for us. Just bow your heads with me. Lord, I just thank you that in your sovereignty, you have plans that we don't even understand, but they're trustworthy. That your plans are good. And Lord, that you have called us to obey. Not in this legalistic, check it off the list kind of thing, but just it is reasonable for us to respond with a heart that desires to obey you because of all that you did on the cross. God, I pray that you would stir that reasonable thing in us that recognizes, that not doesn't just recognize, but desires and longs. Lord, I pray that as we press into your word as, as, as a body, but as individuals, God, that it would, your word would come alive in our hearts, that as we meditate on it, as we just go over it in our minds over and over and over again, your promises and your commands and the way you call us to live, God, that you would just have it take deep root in our souls and in our hearts. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and just fill each person here this morning, that they would go out from this place not trying to do any of this in their own strength, but instead empowered by you. And Lord, I pray that more than ever you pull us together as a body. Lord, in this world that's just going crazy right now, it seems. Lord, that we would be secure in you and with one another. Lord, that we would find that refuge, that we would plant ourselves next to your streams, and that fruit would be produced in all seasons. Lord, that we would be successful for your kingdom's sake and for your will, Lord. 
And in Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.